So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at this 2018 Dodge Durango. Now I've had this thing for almost two years now. I think in a couple months it'll be two years. I've driven it almost 60,000 miles and today I want to do a quick review before I get rid of it. Now, I know that my title was kind of controversial but that's a good thing because based off of what people have told me about the Durango is that they have not been reliable. Now I've had this thing for 60,000 miles and this thing has been actually pretty reliable. I've had very minor issues with it. Now there are some things I would love to change about this specific one but overall it's been a really good car now this is going to be a gt model and all anything that's going to really do is it's going to dress up the front rear fascia to make it more sportier it gives it a darker wheel for 2018 and it makes the front end have painted bumpers and grills basically and overall i do like the styling of this this color is called bruiser gray and every time someone sees me and this thing going by they always think it's going to be like a srt because of this color but until they hear that v6 exhaust note they like yuck under the hood you will find a 3.6 liter v6 and this is going to be good for 295 horsepower that is big power for something like this and it's going to have 260 pound feet of torque now those numbers don't mean anything unless we do a zero to 60 right so let's go ahead and do that One thing I want to point out about this specific Durango is that it is a fleet vehicle. So this vehicle has no added options. So everything you see here is going to be standard. So let's go ahead and take a drive and then we're going to take a look at the interior. And what I'll do is I'm just going to go around the vehicle and just show you some wear and tear items. And then I'm going to give you guys my opinion and a summary of what I think about this SUV. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we get started with the drive, I wanted to show you guys the window sticker for this Durango. Base price is $40,495 and this is everything that comes standard on the vehicle. Now this does not have any options on it so with destination at $1345 you have a total price of $41,840. Something I did not point out in the video is it does have an LED daytime running light and it does have projector fog lights that are halogen and it has halogen headlights. Now they do come with LED fog lights on the newer models and you can get HID as an option in higher trim levels. I believe you can get HID on the GT if you offer certain packages but overall like I said this has a lot of good features on it. Feel free to pause the video if you like. Uh, as far as fuel economy goes I'll go over that in the video too but what I want to do is I want to show you guys what the trade-in value is on this vehicle. Now this thing shows 56,000 miles. I put good condition because it's, it's Decent condition. I mean, there's a few cosmetic things, but overall, still in really good condition. Trade in value is coming in at $20,231. So, this is going to lose about 50% of its value from the time it was purchased. So, keep that in mind and let's go ahead and get back to the video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drive this Dodge Durango. Now, one thing that I do like about this is how quiet it is. This thing is very quiet, and right now, it's abnormally quiet because the engine is off and if you're probably guessing it has this auto stop start I'm not a fan of this yet I think that there's still some tweaks they need to make to the overall system for example when the AC goes off in the summertime I hate that so I always turn it off in the summertime wintertime I normally leave it on because the car doesn't get too cold for me and normally when by the time it starts back up the car is still pretty comfortable but in the summertime when the sun is beaming down on this black interior with a dark color on the outside it gets really uncomfortable Another issue is when it starts back up, it is kind of sluggish. So if you see the light getting ready to turn green or you can kind of see it's about to turn, I would go ahead and lift off the brake and turn it off because it kind of is sluggish if you do hit the gas too quickly. But one thing I will say, 295 horsepower, you can really feel that power, you know, in the 60 on. I mean, of course, this thing has a lot of torque too, 260 pound feet of torque. Um, if you need to, if you need to pass someone like, like right now, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. I mean, it it goes really quickly, and really, I think from like that 55 to 50, there's a little bit of drivetrain loss, and with almost 60,000 miles, it still feels really strong. Like this is how it felt when I first got this. It does not feel like it lost power. And I get the oil change every 10,000 miles, so I get that done religiously. And I think that's good enough. I had them show me 
some of the oil for it to see how dark it was and the oil looked pretty good so you don't necessarily have to go five or seventy five hundred miles you can go ten thousand miles oil changes and the oil still looks good and keep in mind it does use a synthetic oil now if you take a look at the front end of the car this thing has held up really well i mean there is really no damage to the front end. i mean this plastic piece here has seen better days but it's not terrible and this has 80 percent highway mileage too so the paint i mean there's just a few little nicks i mean that one there there's one right there and there, this is the biggest one that i've seen is that you have like a little bit of a like a rock chip here but a lot of this can be buffed out on the front end of the paint and you can just touch up the spots that are missing paint but overall guys i mean this held up really well i mean even down the side of it you can see that the paint still shines and i will say i have never ever waxed this thing so this is really good paint for never being waxed now i will say you can see it's really dirty i haven't washed this thing in like maybe a couple weeks and one thing i will mention if you are you know concerned about the overall appearance i do notice like they do put like a protectant piece here i would go a little bit further and probably go all the way up here and protect this because this piece here is pretty damaged right here i mean it's just it's you can't really tell but it's really faded right down here as far as tire wear goes i have 56,000 miles i've only rotated these tires every 10k so when i go get my oil change done I rotate the tires. So this is 10,000 miles rotation, almost 60K miles on these tires, guys. And these are a 20 inch wheel riding on a 265, 50, 20. And all I've done was rotate the tires. I've never done a wheel alignment or anything. So that's, look at that. I mean, let's take a look at the back tires, but these tires look brand new. I mean, look at that. That is really good. No wheel alignment or anything, guys. So if you're looking at something like this, this holds up pretty well in the suspension. And I would say, I live up north, so I've hit potholes, I've hit uh, bumps in the road, things like that. So even with that being said, the steering wheel is still straight and it doesn't veer off or anything like that. All right, guys, I wanna show you just a rolling start from about 30. It might be a little bit higher because the car in front of me is going kind of slow, but let's take a look. It's a little bit of delay, as you saw. This thing is really quick on its feet, especially over 60 miles an hour. Like it takes no time for it to accelerate from 30 to 50. Taking a look at some of the maintenance on this thing, this is my 40,000 mile service, but it does have your oil change at the top here. I don't know if you guys can see. That oil change for this thing was $100. It was $98.52, $40 for tire rotation. This is for right here. This is a 23 point inspection and this is to replace the air filter. It costs a hundred dollars for them to do that. You better go online and do that yourself. This is so easy to do. Maybe I'll do a video one day on that and just show you how easy it is. And then down here, this is for the cabin air filter. Grand total with parts and labor, $350. If you're interested in seeing a dipstick at, so I'm at 56,000, I probably have maybe 2,000 miles more before I have to get an oil change because I think I might have gotten a little bit sooner. But as I mentioned, I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but that's still really golden. I'll show you guys the uh, percentage of that oil change here in a second. But taking a look at that, that's that's pretty golden for, you know, almost seven or 8,000 miles on that oil change. The oil life is showing 26%. So I have probably about 4,000 more miles. So this is basically 6,000 miles on this oil. And like I said, guys, full synthetic. I think it's a 0W20. No need to go 7,500 miles in this thing. I mean, it still gets really good fuel economy. Let me just show this. 21.7 and 21.2 and 21. I have recorded that this is probably off by maybe like 0.7 but that's really it. I do do some idling in this thing too, so that's why it's off, but it's like off by almost almost one MPG. So I would say this is 20 MPG, you know, respectively. Now the best I've ever gotten that I recorded at the pump is 28 miles per gallon. I took a trip from here down to Florence, South Carolina, and this thing did great. I mean, I had the tire pressure pretty high. I think I had it at 36 maybe, 
so it's at 37 right now but i keep the tire pressure pretty high i mean I, I don't know what the door says but i would say i keep it a few psi's higher than what they tell you to do it at they're saying 33 up front 36 in the rear so i do 37 all, all the way around and that's probably something you want to do if you want to try to get the best fuel economy too one thing i do hate about the drivetrain is really just the transmission i feel as though when it gets warmed up, it does give you a gauge inside of your cluster to show you the temperature for that. But if you're driving around the city, it does get kind of clunky. Like it, it just shifts kind of hard, or I feel like there's more of a delay sometimes if you are like stopping and starting a lot. But if you're on the highway, if you do a lot of highway driving, the transmission and engine are pretty quiet. And this is an eight speed transmission also. The RPM stay pretty low. And the only thing I would say is that if you want more power, you definitely do have options there. That's what I love about this segment. And that's why it's so important because you can't get that in a Highlander. You can't get that in a Honda Pilot or any of the other, you know, competitors. I mean, even for Ford, I mean, you have to go to a twin turbo V6, which is not a bad thing. It's just not ideal if you want that burly V8. Taking a look at the interior, this does kind of have that rental car feel to it, I'll be honest, but it's still a nice interior. I like it. I mean, it has this suede insert on the seats and then has leather on the outside. This has held up really well too, guys. I've never put anything on these seats and you can just kind of see like they have pretty much lasted, you know, 60,000 miles. And same thing goes for the steering wheel too, leather wrap steering wheel. They do give you paddle shifters too. The brakes on this probably have another 20 to 30,000 miles to go too, guys. I, I do downshift when I come up to lights with the paddle shifters, and I think that's helped too overall. I showed you guys a little bit of the screen, but just really quickly, you guys can see tire pressure, transmission temp, oil temp, oil pressure, oil life, battery voltage, and it hops back over to tire pressure. Scrolling down, it does give you your fuel economy information, as I showed you guys this earlier. And you also have your range there too. Trip A and your trip B's on here also. Shows you your stop start system. Now if your steering wheel is turned or if your seatbelt's not on, this system will not come on, just as an FYI. Music off, shows you like what you're listening to here if you'd like to see that. If you have any stored messages, basically like if you have a bulb out warning or anything like that, those things will come up on this system here. It also gives you the option to turn this on to kilometers or miles per hour and then it takes you back here. As I mentioned, this does have Apple CarPlay. You do not have navigation from the factory, but you do have, you know, of course, Bluetooth audio and you have USBs to control the Apple CarPlay. Now this does have dual climate control. Love that they give it to you here and you also can control it outside of the screen. Now, if you click here, you do have heated seats and you have a heated steering wheel. You also have heated seats on the outer second row chairs. And if you're like me, I use Waze for my navigation. This system works really well. You can just download the app on your phone and it plays through through the Apple CarPlay. And of course you can hit here and it shows you pretty much everything else that you have inside of here too. You have two USBs down here and an auxiliary and you have two more USBs out back. Cup holders, as you guys can see, I have this Big Yeti and I have my little Contigo fit perfectly. Now you can put this cup on the side here, but the only thing is, you don't want to fill the cup all the way up because it does slant down when it goes in here. And they give you storage right here. And you also have two compartments in the center. You have one here where I put all my napkins. And then, you, of course, you have all your junk that you put down here. Glove box does give you some storage. And you do have your, I don't know if you can see it, but you do have a owner's manual that you can slip up top here to kind of give you more space down here. And on this side, too, you do have a cup holder with additional storage in the door pocket. Outback is kind of tight. When you get inside, I did push the seat up just a little bit. That way you guys can see, cause this is still be comfortable for me. I'd like to have my seat all the way back so I can stretch out my arms, my legs. But this is up maybe, maybe three inches. And you still have a lot of space back here, but it is kind of tight for this size SUV. The rear seats do recline, which does come in handy. What they do is they give you a handle on the side here seat reclines it is a 60 40 bench too so if you need one half of the seat down for carrying things you can and what's interesting is you do have a 50 50 
third row seat that you can have stuff stored back here and still have a passenger back here also. One place where the Durango has always shined is rear cargo space. Even with the seats up, they do give you a lot of space and it's so easy to drop the third row seat too. All you have to do is just pull that handle and drop it down. And you just pull this little string here to pull it back up. Now they still give you a place on the side here to put small things like maybe bottles or stuff like that. And they also give you a large one back in the rear too. Now I did not show you the one below the front seat too. So let me show you that one. You do have storage below the front seat as I mentioned. And all you have to do is just pull up. It's kind of hard, but you have to pull up pretty hard to get it to come up but it will pop up and you can store some of your belongings. No, not many people know about this. I have actually ran into some people who have Durango's and when I tell them about the compartment below the seat, they don't know about it. So unfortunately now, if you were trying to hide something from thieves, they now know where it's at. Now I've owned three Jeep Grand Cherokees in the past and I will say that I do like the way they handle better than the Durango, specifically for this one. This is gonna be, like I say, lower trim level. You have the SXT, then you have the GT basically. And then from there you go to go up to like a RT, Citadel, and of course the SRT. And I just feel as though the handling is not as tight as I would want it to be. It's not that it's, you know, uncomfortable, it's just, for me, I like a little bit more of a stiffer ride and I like it to feel more secure. So if I'm going around a curve at 70 miles an hour or something like that, I don't want to feel like I have to slow down. With this, I feel like I have to slow down. I mean, it almost feels like you're driving a truck and that's what I don't like about this specific suspension. So all the commotion online about people saying that Chrysler products are not reliable, this thing has had zero issues, zero. The only issue that I recorded having this was that the air filter was making some noise and upon my inspection, it was put in incorrectly at the dealership. So the only thing I'll tell you is this, a lot of people say that these cars are unreliable. I have 56,408 miles, no issues. Now I have driven this thing pretty hard. I mean, I idle this thing. I go 10,000 miles on the oil changes. I've done nothing out of the ordinary for the maintenance on this thing. The AC still blows cold. There's no issues. There's no noises. At 100 miles an hour, this thing will feel just as tight as it did when it was brand new. The only issues I've noticed that this thing has had is that the transmission has gotten kind of clunky. It's just, it just clunks a lot, you know, more than it did when it was new. But that's it. Apart from that, this thing has been really reliable. If you're in the market for a Dodge Durango or if you've been considering buying one, I would recommend that you get one. The only thing about these things are they do depreciate really quickly. It's not a Toyota Highlander. It's not going to hold its value as good as those things will. But I would strongly recommend still putting it on your list of SUVs if you do keep them for a long time. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. One thing I want to mention to you guys is I made a statement about the oil change interval. You have to figure out for yourself what's best for you. I go. 10,000 miles because I drive this thing 80 to 90 percent highway if you're doing a lot of city driving you probably want to do your oil change a little bit quicker than me maybe 7,500 uh, I would say max you can go 5,000 miles but I still think even doing a lot of city driving you can kind of might be wasting your money but 10,000 miles if you're doing a lot of highway driving same thing goes for my tires I can go probably another 10 to 15,000 miles safely without these tires becoming an issue for me but Again, that's really good. I mean, that puts me almost at a little bit over 70,000 miles on the original tires. Brakes are still strong on this thing. And I mean, I, I feel like this thing was well built even for it to be a fleet vehicle. But again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or any concerns, I mean, feel free to leave a comment in the bottom. I'll try to help you the best I can. See you in the next video. I almost forgot, the big announcement is I'm getting another truck.